when we talk about being displaced people, there is a new beginning, but I think there's hope at the end of this journey. Just simply saying, well, we in Atlantic Canada, as everywhere else in the world, will experience this problem. How are we going to address it? So the first question um, you need to ask, and most of these are formulated in terms of questions, um, has comprehensive diagnostic work, especially along coastlines and waterways, already been undertaken across the various provinces of Atlantic Canada that can be presented to policymakers? So that's the first question you, you need to ask. And then secondly, importantly, the basic simple question of how many people and how many households are going to be affected. Um, thirdly, what current laws and policies are relevant and are new laws and policies required? And the fourth question you need to ask is whose door does, on whose door does a threatened person or household knock for assistance if they're threatened by climate displacement? The fifth item to look into is whether there are budget lines dedicated to climate displacement issues in your relevant local, provincial, national budgets. The sixth one is how extensive is insurance coverage for threatened households? Where will people go? that simple question of where are they gonna go? Relatedly, and the eighth point is, could a climate land bank be established in the near term? Um, ninth, um, do any of the political parties have policies or manifestos addressing uh, the question of climate displacement? And then finally, you know, can we look at um, the possibility of changing uh, local and national immigration policy to add a category of climate displaced person to the pre-existing categories of people who are prioritized and given priority status, a preference um, under uh, pr provincial level and national level immigration policy. On whose door do I knock for assistance in Atlantic Canada or the place you live in? If the severity and frequency of extreme weather events such as flooding or storms or sea level rise are making my property and inhabitable and I have to relocate. What we have to do, I think, is all of a sudden talk to the province, look for some provincial help. The provincial government looks at the federal government. So it's this, this three-tiered approach. But at the end of the day, the first knock on the door is going to come from, I think, uh, at the municipal council level. Your next door neighbor. Your community, you know, uh, government is so wholly unprepared um, and for the most part still in denial. Um, but, but it really will take um, grassroots mobilization, the, the growth of movements in order for these issues to reach the level they need to reach. It's going to be the power of people that move things forward. If we help educate all municipal leaders and teach them to look at the same data and speak the same language, then we will be able to put forth um, a, a message which is much more coherent and will help people move in a more positive way. Sacrifices maybe need to be made by those of us who have more than we need. And I think it could be done joyfully if we're helping others. But I think it really begins with electing people who are at least enlightened about the possibilities and the compassion piece. Because um, I can tell you, if you get six, eight counselors that are moving in this direction, communities are going to go that direction. Small municipalities are responsive. You know, planning and zoning isn't just a designation question. It's ultimately a, a liability question. I just wanted to say something as well. It does seem like we're dramatically unprepared, certainly in Nova Scotia, if not Atlantic Canada. Let me just add quickly, let, we cannot forget about money. Um, you know, cash is going to be a huge determinant here. And appropriate planning, appropriate laws and policies, appropriate resource allocations can really make a difference in preventing, you know, worst case scenarios. Um, but the overwhelming majority of the human race is going to be negatively affected.
by climate change and we need to um, respond accordingly in a way that's unified, in a way that's truly grounded in compassion. And we can do it, um, but we are running out of time. We ask the Creator to help us come together as one so that eventually we will pull, not only pull all our resources, but we will come together as one to help each other, to support each other, and most importantly, we will use the gifts that you have given us, Creator, to look after the ones that cannot, cannot fend for themselves in human form, so that eventually we will all work together, use the gifts that the Creator has given us to help Mother Nature sustain herself, to heal herself, so that we too will benefit if she is healthy. Thank you. <laughs>